Hi, this is Rabbi Chaim Kaufman. Welcome to our 272nd installment of the Torah portion of the week. We are holding by Parshas Kisavo. Kisavo. Parshas Kisavo speaks about the first fruits, talks about the decoration, the confession of the ties, and talks about the new commitments, talks about blessings and curses. Um, mostly a lot about curses here. But in any case, the Torah tells me the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 13. And the Torah here says, Hashem shall place you as a head, not as a tail. You shall be only above, you shall not be below. If you hearken to the commandments of Hashem, your God, that I command you today to observe and perform. Now, interesting, here the Torah tells me that you shall be only above and not be below. What does that mean? What does that seem to mean over here? So says says my Rebbe, a Rabbi going to Moshe to Moshlita should be well, and it brings down in Tam Vidas, brings down his commentary, commentary on Chumash, and he says I got a problem. I got a problem over here. What's the problem? He says I have double I have a double language, double language over here. It says that you should be above, and you shouldn't be below. So he said, if you're above, then for sure you're not below. Right? So why do you have to tell me both? Right? If you say you're below, that means you're not above. Or if you say that you're above, you're not below. Double language. So Rebbe here brings down one of the great Chassidish Rebbe's, the Yismach Moshe. And the Yismach Moshe says like this, that a person has to know and they have to feel that basically in this world they're nothing and that this world is nothing because what's the purpose what's the purpose of creation why were we created in the first place not for this world we weren't created for this world the whole purpose of what we're doing here is for the sake of the next world <clears throat> the ramchal says in there hashem that we have to live in this world we have to toil we have to struggle. And if we make the grades, we get a portion of the world to come. We get rewards for what we've done. Now, we would even do it and keep the mitzvahs even if we didn't get reward. That's even a pretty big miracle, you know, that we get reward over here. Why? Because if you're doing what God's commanded anyway, you have an obligation to keep it. So what? They should give you a Tootsie Pop, Tootsie Roll, a Hoodsie. Right? Anyone doesn't know what a hoodsie is? Right? I grew up in Boston. So it was like a Dixie, Dixie cup, chocolate and vanilla ice cream. Right? It was like a wooden spoon. Right? And it was made by hoods. So they called it a hoodsie. Right? So going to say, what? I get a hoodsie? I should get a hoodsie for keeping Torah and Mitzvah? That's what I'm crazy to do. That's what the mission Perkei Avor says. Says in ethics of our fathers, why in the world do you think you should get you should uh, get so much reward for what you do? Why should you think you're so great? Because that's what you're created to do. That's what God put you in this world for. So it can't be for the sake of this world. Because a lot of strife. People die young. People suffer. Right? There must be something else going on. So there's a spiritual world over here. So I have to think things in this world, what are they worth? Nothing. You know, I have to live in this world. Everybody has to live in this world. Because you don't get to the next world without going through this world. So that's why it says you should be above. Meaning, meaning that our thoughts, our ideas, our mind should be in the clouds. Right? Thinking that the spiritual world, spiritual things, that's the most important thing. The physical world I have to live here, true. I have no choice. But a person shouldn't think, he says, that you shouldn't think that living in this world, i.e. Lamata means this world, the physical world, is anything to compare to the spiritual world. 
Now, what's the obvious question? Someone's got to say, what my Rebbe would say, I never met anyone in that world to come back. True? We've heard stories, people have thought about experiences and what they felt and, you know, their, their soul hovered above the body. They were drawn to this, this great light. So I, we understand Jews, non-Jews, whoever made these statements, they had out-of-body experiences. We understand there's a soul. They're not going to lie. It's not going to, you know, they're all not going to corroborate the same story, exactly what Kabbalah says, right? That the soul hovers over the body and all that. Even so, even so, this world cannot be the ultimate. The Ramchal says, his introduction, his introduction, the path of the just. We see a lot of things that are upside down. We see, let's say, we'll, we'll use this as an example. We see children suffer. We see children born, God forbid, with terrible diseases. Or maybe terrible things happen to them, whatever the case is. Now, when you look at that, you have one, you know, one way of looking at it, you could say they're they're bad luck. Right? They're bad luck. We don't believe in bad luck. Now you could say, person could say, well, maybe that's punishment. Now it can't be for the child's punishment. Because when do we understand if a person sins in this world? When do we understand punishment comes? Punishment comes at the age of 12 or 13. 12 for a girl, when she matures, 13 for a boy, or at the age of 20. So that means that the child is under age, under any of those ages. Can't be punishment. It's not punishment over you. Because whatever they did wrong, they're not liable. In general, they're not liable. All right? So the Ramchal says, that's the case, then there's something else going on. What's that other thing going on? Can we understand that's the idea of a soul. That the soul could be put in this world, you know, in order to fix up, you know, the sins that it did so it can have its proper portion of the world to come. Because Gehenna, hell, whatever you want to call it, what, what is it? It purges the soul of any sins it did. And if there's anything left of the soul, it goes into God naked. Goes into paradise, but the soul could come back. The soul could say, Give me another chance. Let me come back. Let me fix it up. God says, Fine. I'm going to put you in this messed up body. Or I'm going to have it where you get trampled on, you get abused, you get kicked around because you kicked around a lot of people in your previous life, measure for measure. So you got to fix that up. So it can't be, if you look at this world, a lot of ups and downs. Looks like evil people have it easy, righteous people have it hard. A lot of things don't make sense. So this world, again, either going to say it's one big mistake. And it's all going to depend on, you know, whose family you were born into. It's going to be basically dependent on luck. That's what it's going to depend on. But if we believe God runs the world, God puts every soul in every body and he knows what he's doing. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes. Sounds like the Matrix. So we have to realize this world is not the ultimate because it doesn't compare to the next world. Ah, you tell me. The spiritual world, I never met anyone there. Never met anyone there come back. We have stories about people who have had out-of-body experiences. Right, they feel that their life flashes before their eyes. Everything they did, every last thought, they're drawn to this great light. They feel at peace. Does anyone truly today? Does anyone truly today feel at peace? They can have all the money in the world, all the protection in the world. Now walk out that door. Do they know what's going to be? Do they know they're coming back? You're going to say all things being equal. Why not? I went out yesterday. I came back. Why not today? You don't know. Nobody knows. No guarantee. There are two things guaranteed in life. 
death and taxes. Not necessarily that order. That's guaranteed. But in this world, nobody feels safe, totally. Some more, some less. Well, we don't feel that inner peace in general. Because there are too many things going on. There could be a million things going on at once. Well, we don't feel that inner peace. Maybe sometimes it's a glimpse. You know, we feel certain things. But again, what does Ram Chal say in Derech Hashem? Or in, in Path of the Just? He says, you're here to toil. You're here to toil in this world. So that means one day it's not going to be easy. Just not going to be easy. We're not thinking about other things. It could be terrible things. It could be, I don't know, whatever it is. Nobody feels totally safe. So what's the point? So the point is, this world cannot be the ultimate. As much joy as a person may get, let's say, from seeing, seeing their team win the championship, if they're into sport. Euphoria, unbelievable. You know, unless they keep winning year in and year out. Gets kind of, you know, it doesn't get boring. That one doesn't get boring, but, you know, there's euphoria. But is that real life? Is that real meaning? It's not real. Like living your life through these other players. Even if you used to play or whatever. Right? But you're rooting them on, okay? Is that the real world? Is the real world just watching stock market go up and go down? Is the real world losing yourself in a movie? Or other things? Playing on your phone? How does that compare to doing a mitzvah? And we don't fully understand it, this and that. How does it compare to spirituality? It doesn't. That's the whole point. This world, we can give it up in one shot like good old Uncle Asa. For a bowl of lentils. Because we don't care. We don't think about it. We just give in to desire. But for that benefit of those lentils or whatever that act is that you enjoy, it doesn't last. You need something else and more and more. But imagine, person had a six course meal, beautiful meal, stuffed to the gills. You know, you top it off, nice piece of chocolate cake, mousse, whatever. You kick it back, you feel like you're going to burst. But, ah, what a meal. How long does that last? I'm not going to get gross here. We know where the meal is going to end up. We know it's going to come out the other end. Someone's going to say, what are you, nuts? So what? I know that. doesn't matter. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to savor it. Is that the real world? Enjoying that last piece of cake on top? We live like this world is the ultimate thing. We think we're going to live forever. And we live our lives like that. We're always planning, always planning, but is that what I'm supposed to do? Is that my obligation? Got to prepare for the future? You don't know what the future is going to bring. King Solomon says in Proverbs, I don't know what today's going to bring. Certainly don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Doesn't matter, we gotta prepare for tomorrow also. We can't take anything for granted. We gotta live with our minds in heaven, in spiritual terms. Cannot be that just random acts of enjoyment and going after my desires brings, it's gonna bring the ultimate happiness. Maybe a little bit here, a little bit there. So if that's true. And it would bring ultimate happiness. You say, I'm not going to go into religion, this, that. You know, this will bring 
some happiness. So why is everyone on Prozac? To get through life. Even if you have money. Life's hard. You don't know. You don't know what it's going to be. So another thing I want to explain is the beginning of the verse says you should be like the head, not the tail. That you should live your life You should live your life like the head, like the mind wants. Not what the heart desires, but what the mind wants. What the mind knows is right. You don't like the tail that goes after other people. That goes after the latest fad. So a person should think of what they do. They should think deep in what they do. In the ways of God. That's what they should do. And serve God to the highest level they can. Good for the month of Elm. Right? Because what do we say? The whole month is to be introspective. To think deeper into what I do on a daily basis. It's what I have to do. It's my obligation. I want to be better. I want to have a good judgment. I want to lay myself down and say, God, I, I have to work hard. I haven't been good enough. None of us have been good enough. We all have a lot of work to do. I got to think about what I do. I got to think about what's real. I got to think about what's true. And then what's the hardest part? Got to live it. That's the hardest part. I got to figure out what the heart wants and do what the mind says. And not make a disconnect, as we always say. So I got to think deeply over here. And have my mind in the clouds and what it means on a daily basis. Serve God right. Right? In the right way. Going down the right path. You're going to say, but I work and I got all our obligations. Okay? Person has to find time. Doesn't have to be a lot of time. But you have to find time to see what you're doing. The focus. Right? And if you're making mistakes, figure out how you can stop making the mistake. How you can stop giving in to desire. That's what we have to do. I didn't say it's easy. It can be depressing also if you think about what we do on a regular basis. Okay, you got to start somewhere. But the first thing is, is to put in our minds on a daily basis, this world is nothing. I'm going to live in this world, but ultimately it doesn't mean anything. But I have to live in this world to get to the other side. Right, meaning to have a portion of the world to come. But see, that's why the Levites stopped working at the age of 50, not necessarily because of strength, lack of strength. Why did they stop? So, so Rebbe says, you know why they stopped? They stopped because they have to realize now life is fleeting. They have to realize that at a certain age, they got to take stock of their lives. They have to know that some point they're going to go in the grave. So everybody says at the age of 50 already, people should start thinking about the next one. Preparing themselves now for the next one. Right? For most people, what are they going to do? They're just going to live life from the next enjoyment to the next enjoyment. Whatever it is, ball game, movie, sports, this, that, food. Right? They won't give it any other thought. Because they don't want to live their life that way. They don't want to take responsibility. They just want to have fun. Life is too hard. Don't say leave me alone with all this moisture and ethics. Forget it. Let me just enjoy life. We don't enjoy life. Most people are miserable because they don't know how to live. Right? So you're going to say, come on. It's all about Torah mitzvahs? Yeah. Is there anything else? No. There's nothing else. Nothing else to fill my time. We waste time on other things. Fine. We shouldn't. Because every mitzvah is like a diamond. The diamond. You gotta polish the diamond. Polish the soul. By doing so, realize that our head has to be upstairs. 
have to be thinking in spiritual terms no matter what we're doing. But not to think this world is just the end to end all things. And, you know, I'm going to go six feet under. Well, for your sake, you're right, because if I'm right, you're just going six feet, you know, under, there's a lot more that's going on. A lot more. The Emperor Rebbe said, you got to think, you got to think deeply in the ways of God, follow his path, do what he says, you know, not do things by rote, elevate the soul, elevate ourselves, you know, and prepare for the ultimate test, the ultimate judgment. What did I do in this world? What do I have to show for myself in spiritual terms? Physical terms, we don't care. Make more money, less money, this, that, doesn't matter. What God cares about is what you did in spiritual terms. And that we have to take stock every day, especially in the month of El. Got less than two weeks left of Rosh Hashanah. Got to take stock, got to think. What am I doing? Where have I gone? Where was I last year? Am I any better this year? What do I need to work on? And then we have to go out and do it. Definitely a lot easier than it sounds. I want to remind everyone every Tuesday, I have a class on Tuesdays of the Heart, 9 o'clock Eastern time. Um, every Sunday, pack day, Book of Leviticus, chapter 16, uh, 9 o'clock Eastern time, 4 o'clock Israel time. No hide nations, no hide laws. Uh, Sunday, 2.30 uh, Eastern time, 9.30 Israel time. Q&As, two Q&As every Tuesday, Thursday, 10 o'clock Eastern time, 5 o'clock Israel time. Uh, Tanakh talk, controversial issues. Every Thursday, 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, Perke Avos, Ethics of Our Fathers. Every Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern time, 9 o'clock Israel time. Conversion classes. Anyone has any questions on any of this, find me on Facebook at Michael Chaim Kaufman or Beyond Orthodox Conversion to Judaism. You can send me an email, Rabbi Chaim Kaufman at gmail.com, R-A-B-B-I-C-H-A-I-M-C-O-F-F-M-A-N at gmail.com.